Hey guys! Today is our last proper day here in Tokyo and we're gonna use it to go to Tsukiji Market. So the original place where you would bid, you know, or where you could come and see the, the bidding for the tuna bits, that's all moved to the new Toyosu Market, which is kind of modern and uh, nowadays you can't really even be amidst the old auction anymore. But we've heard that uh, in Tsukiji the ultra part is still there, which was always my favorite part anyway, because that's where all the food happens. So I thought today we would go there and vlog and show you guys what's left of it and try some of the foods. Let's do that. we made was at this little onigiri store and I was looking for this specific look of onigiri because that's what I have on my arm. This, that's it. When people ask what the hell is this, it's that. This one is salmon and wasabi, so like fresh wasabi. I really wish I could do the cute anime girl gnome, but I can't. Well, <laughs> bit spicy? No, it's just, just the right amount, plus it's fresh wasabi, so it's not as concentrated. Cool. It's nice. Mm. Nice. Try. Will do. Wow, this wow. is gonna be a super flattering shot, just to warn you. <laughs> How's it? Uh. We found some barabi mochi by, uh, and while I'm eating it, I'm gonna say hi to to Merede, who is my Bracken starch sister. Anyway, here's the, like a mix. So you have the kinako, which is the roasted soybean powder. Then I think matcha, and then black sesame. It's softer than the normal rice mochi. So I imagine that it annually kills less people than normal rice mochi. If you've never heard of that, people actually die eating those cute little white mochis. Be careful, y'all. That's so good. A good both sweet and savory snack for vegetarians here at Tsukiji Market is this traditional uh, Japanese omelette or just tamago. Uh, here this shop specializes in it and they have different flavors but you can also get this chunk for only 120 yen so like 90 b or something and uh, he brought a fresh one from the back. It's hot. <laughs> good though? Mm, it has this like sweet savoriness which tends to happen a lot in, in Japanese food, I noticed. It's like, it's not like a dessert sweet, but it's a savory thing with like a really strong sweet note. I have a sweet tooth, so I love this. <laughs> so next up we have this tuna steak that's being grilled right here behind me. I'm pretty sure I've seen this tuna steak in uh, Paolo from Tokyo's video. Uh, it's a shout out to him. I really like his videos. He's super informative. So if you're interested in food in Tokyo, really go check out his channel. Anyway, let's give this a go. It must be probably, um, what do you call it, marinated in something first. And then it has that like nice grilled flavor on top. Mm. That's right. No idea where it's marinated in, it's delicious. Mm.
Akihabara, which was pretty fast from Tsukichi Market. It's not really a walkable distance unless you're super fresh and it's like your first day here. For me, it's like my 14th day here, so I'm trying to save my legs. Uh, anyway, we made it here. I did some shopping in the local shops. Especially, there's always a couple of shops that sell um, like un unwrapped uh, gachapon toys, which you know will save you a lot of the excitement, but also possibly a lot of the money and frustration. So I go to those and pick up the gachapon toys that I want the most, or get them as gifts, and it's the best. Also, Pablo Mini is in Akihabara, and we've got one plain and one matcha, and they're so good, especially when you get them fresh and when you when you buy them and you eat them straight away. You can keep them in the fridge for three days, I think, but um, I recommend you just eat them while you're in Akihabara. Why wouldn't you? I think Simon did some gaming shopping. Simon did a lot of gaming shopping. So Simon's got a Mega Man game, uh, the original Earthbound that never came out in the UK, another Mega Man game, the sequel, um, some beautiful box games, Tactics Ogre, um, oh Second Deception 3, Romancing Saga 3, and uh, a game that I can't pronounce. <laughs> it's um damn oh. fire, fire emblem fire emblem thank you yes ha ah, i could read that and what's in this little baggie uh we got the new pokemon games for the switch Ooh, that's gonna be our plan for the flight back now as you can see from my face we are quite tired so we're gonna relax a bit with some drinks oh my god i can see how my hair is like all over the place Quite windy, surprisingly, surprisingly so today. Uh, anyway, I collect these little printed glasses filled with sake. Uh, they're not super hard to source in Tokyo, and when you drink them while you're here, then they're also not super heavy to bring home. I have this one, and Simon got... He found this Ranma one in Don Quixote, which is super awesome. So that's gonna be a great one for our collection. Tsukiji, by the way, is still absolutely worth going, even though it technically moved. I realized that even five years ago, when I was traveling to Japan for my first time ever, I didn't actually visit the, the area that moved. So for me, it was just as great as back then. Uh, I guess I would only give you one tip, which is to not come too late, because some of the cool places there are kind of sold out or they close about like one-ish in the afternoon so you want to be there early you want to get the fresh fish while they still have it yes that's the only thing other than that they have everything it's, it's such a good choice some of the stuff is quite affordable some of it is quite fancy you can grab some sushi but you don't have to uh there's also beer there's coffee there's matcha there's everything sweets all of that so i think it's still a really cool place to go even though it technically now moved to Toyosu. Anyway, enough talking. I want to brush my teeth and go to bed because I'm tired. And a tiny bit tipsy. And that's what I am. Anyway, that's a goodbye final sign off from me and Chimkin. And I will see you soon. Bye.